Hello, and welcome to The Artist Pivot, a weekly conversation with artists about their current pivot, past pivots, and every pivot in between. I am your host, Ayana Major Bay, an actress who wants to educate, empower, and celebrate artists so they have no option but to thrive. On this episode, I am joined by performer Tyler Collier. She is a Boston Conservatory grad and was playing T-Moon in Once on this Island before the shutdown. During the pandemic, she started narrating audiobooks and is represented by the Mine Agency. She really loves unicorns, coloring, and playing The Sims. We discuss her pivot into narrating audiobooks and how our mental health as artists and people is the most important thing for us to take care of. Here's our conversation. All right, y'all. So today, I am so excited. Like, really, really, really excited to have a friend of mine on. And that is Miss Tyla Collier. Hi, Tyla. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you doing today? You know, I'm good today. The sun is shining. Like I said before, my mucus is attacking me. So please forgive me, everybody, <laughs> because I don't know what's happening with me today. Um, but Tyla, as custom, it seems to be uh, on season two. Um, I'm not really asking everybody like, you know, how are you and expect you to answer the question. What I'm asking is, how is your soul feeling today? And then also, what are your hydration levels like? Like, have you had enough water? So those are my first two uh, questions to you. Okay. Um, my soul today, I think my soul's feeling at peace, um, which is mm -hmm. a great feeling because obviously that changes from day to day. But today my soul's feeling at peace. Um, and in terms of hydration, I am extremely hydrated. Um, I was just doing a, uh, just recording right before this. So I've been hydrating all day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Understood. Yay. Come on, extremely <laughs> hydrated and peaceful soul. I'm here for it. Woo. Tyler, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to have you, especially because I know you just got back from a little vacation. Yes. But most importantly, you out here doing audiobooks and stuff. So. Oh, girl, where do I start? Um, <laughs> where do we start? So let you know what you have made some amazing pivots in 2020 for yourself personally and career-wise. But you. I want to talk about what you were doing prior to the pandemic. So just give me a little snippet of your life before the pandemic. Sure. So let's see. Before the pandemic, um, I was in Utah at Pioneer Theater Company. I was playing T-Moon once on this island, um, which was amazing because it's been a dream role for 10 years. So mm -hmm. it was really awesome. I got to do it um, right before that. And our contract actually ended a week before the shutdown. So it was great. Wow. We actually got to finish it out. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, I remember flying back. I think it was like March 8th, 7th or 8th. I think the 8th. Um, and we were hearing all these reports of everything that was like happening. We were like, oh, I don't know what's happening, but uh, we're going on this plane. And it was crazy because all of us were healthy um mm -hmm. which is a really big blessing um but yeah that's kind of what I was doing before and just living in the city and you know auditioning grinding hustling all that um the life you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes 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 the life of an artist yes and so I know now that you like I had just mentioned you were F did a full-on dive, full-on pivot, full-on voluntary, like, this is my new path into audiobooks yes. in 2020. So I want you to elaborate, break that down, and, you know, explain how you got into it, why you love it. And also, did you want to do audiobooks even before the pandemic started? Um, okay, I'm going to start with that last question you asked. Sure. So, yes, yeah. I have been wanting to get into um, audiobooks, like voiceover kind of things for so long, but I've never, first of all, had like the time to actually devote to like learning the actual craft of it all. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never had, I guess, like the resources of like, okay, this is how I'm going to learn. Um, so that all kind of like came to me during the pandemic. Um, I was like everyone else, just 
devastated about, you know, the loss of income and theater and all of it um, Mm -hmm. and the lives lost and everything um, that the pandemic has brought. Um, And I was kind of just looking on Instagram one day and uh, I did a show with um, this woman. Her name is Elise Arsenault. She's amazing. Um, And Mm -hmm. I did a show with her when I was, I think, in high school. Like it was a really long time ago. Um, And we just kind of like stayed in touch and stayed friends. And Elise is also an actor. a musical theater performer, also like TV, film, all of that. But she also does audiobooks. And that is like her, that has become her, um, her like bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And she now has this, um, platform, I guess, um, called the global actor where she kind of helps, um, actors transition and into, um, audiobooks and that kind of thing. And so she was doing this class and I saw, um, about, I saw the, posts that she made on Instagram and I reached out and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a grant and I just started, I think like the next week um, Mm -hmm. or, and so it was pretty crazy. And I spent eight weeks uh, doing the course. It was an online course, um, obviously, since everything's online these days. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I just spent eight weeks like really studying all about um, narration and not just narration, but also the tech aspects of everything, like, um, you know, getting equipment and building a booth. I'm actually, um, right now in my booth, I have like a PVC pipe, uh, sound booth with like sound blankets over it. And, um, yeah, just like getting the right microphone and equipment and like how to even work a DAW, which like I was before this, I was like, what is that? Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. So yeah, um, spent like eight weeks doing that. And that was a really big learning curve, um, of course. And then uh, once I finished, I was able to produce some demos. Mm -hmm. And I just started, you know, getting them out there, putting them on my website, um, other platforms and stuff. And then things from there just kind of started happening. And that part, I think, is just well, not I think. I know it was definitely God because there's mm-hmm. just no other way that it could have happened. Right. Right. And so all of those pieces fell into place. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. And so then once you finished the course and you, like you said, you put out the demos and all of that, did you um, then have an agency reach out to you? Or is this like, hey, I do audiobooks. Here's my stuff on my website. And then if you'd like to hire me to do your book, great. We talk about things. Or are you with an agency? Um, So I'm with an agency, but um, for audiobooks, you actually don't need an agent, which is like something like, yeah, I think a lot of people, um, including myself, like don't know that. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like the one like voiceover kind of thing that like agents are not really uh, a necessity. So you pretty much just have direct relationships with the publishers that you're working with um, and with the editors and stuff. And they um, encourage reach outs and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, sometimes referrals, like I've had a couple of referrals to people and that's how I've gotten some things. Um, But a lot of times it's just you reaching out to publishers who you want to work with. And if they like your stuff, they'll either put you on their roster and, you know, think of you for next time or they'll say, oh, I actually do have a project for you. Um, So that's Mm -hmm. kind of how it works which is uh, pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. I I had no idea. I know, yeah. I didn't either until uh, the summer. Until you got into it. Yeah. Yes. Th- thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, because I, you know, always thought that, I guess in the voiceover world, that everything that's a voiceover, whether it be commercial, audiobook, a video game, uh, you know, whatever needs a voiceover would go through an agent. Right. But, that's very interesting. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And it's uh, it, it makes it more accessible, I guess. But I mean, of course, like agents can help. But I definitely think, you know, you don't need one for this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Understood. Understood. So now I guess, I mean, you kind of answered the question of like, before the pandemic, you didn't have the time to devote to learning, um, you know, about the craft of audiobooks and the craft of actually really narration, if you will. Um, do you think that if the pandemic didn't happen, that you would have carved out time 
to like learn and go, okay, no, I really want to do audiobooks. Now let me learn about the craft of narrating. Honestly, no. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really, I don't think so. I think I would have always, because I didn't, I didn't have time to like any extra time that I had was definitely devoted to like, oh, let me go take this dance class. Let me Mm. go have a voice lesson or something like that. Um, or like try to develop the craft that I was, you know, doing um, pre-pandemic. But I think, yeah, I don't think I would have carved out the time because I look at how much time was spent and like, you know, the homework assignments that we were doing and we had to listen to like um, at least one book a week, um, which Mm -hmm. as you know, like they're pretty long and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, practicing and all of that stuff. Like it just took a lot of, um, a lot of time. And I don't think that I would have been able to carve out time had I not had the pandemic not happened Mm, that's fair that's fair and thank you for that and I think that there's a lot of us are discovering oh right this is my new reality and yes this is what I have now and I might not have had it if the pandemic didn't happen and yes you know it's, it's not ignoring all of the bad that has happened during this pandemic absolutely but it's acknowledging the good that's come out of it for a lot of people. Yes, I am 100% in agreement with that. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm I'm just learning so much from you. I'm like, yes, I know my friend does audiobooks and she's kind of made this pivot into them, you know. Come we're y'all, we did hairspray together. So <laughs> woo, woo, this is my dynamite sister. So like music, you know, we're musical theater. Yes. And so I was like, I know Tyler does audiobooks, but I want to talk to her about it. But thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and like giving that insight. And is there something actually, yeah, before I go on to um, this next question, I want to talk about narration. Is there something that you learned, you know, during that course and even, you know, learning now while you're narrating that really surprised you that people wouldn't people wouldn't know that it, that it takes, you know, either this skill or this. Um, gosh, I'm at a loss for words. What am I trying to say? So what I'm trying <laughs> to say is something that you have learned that would surprise people about the skill of narration. Does hmm. that make that question make sense? I hope it that does. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It makes sense. It does. Um, let's see. I mean, maybe this wouldn't surprise people, but I think um something I've learned is that attention to detail is everything in this mm. uh in this world. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, sometimes you have dir- live directed sessions where you'll have like a director actually <clears throat> directing you as you um, record, but okay. um, there are a lot of times where you don't. So you're kind of just directing yourself. So mm. you are, you know, tasked with um, making sure that things are accurate, as accurate as possible, um, making sure your levels are are good. You're not, you know, too close or too far away um, to the mm-hmm. mic. Um, making sure that you read accurately. I mean, you know, there are mm-hmm. a lot of times where I'll read a sentence and I'm like, oh, I switched a word or I missed a word. And it's kind of like you really have to be you have to really pay attention to those details. Um, And, you know, sometimes even the way that a character will say something like, you know, it'd be like da 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 da. She whispered. And then it's like, oh, I have to go back and do that again and like whisper it this time, you know. Yes, yes, yes. I do know. Yeah, it's really paying attention to what's on the page. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. So now, okay, this brought up another question. Do you record, and again, this is probably different with each book that you record, but is it, you know, like chapter by chapter? Is it character by character? And then you overlay the other character, like if they're having a conversation and you're playing two characters, do you do it line by line? Do you do each character separately? Like, I'm intrigued now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I usually just go, well, first of all, I usually will carve out like, um, I try to record in like two to three hour chunks before giving myself a break. Um, okay. Usually I'll get to like two hours and I'm like, all right, I need a break. But mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. I'll try to go for three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, because then once you get in a, a flow, you're like, okay, I don't want to stop now. I'm like on a roll. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the characters, I usually just go line by line okay. um, and I'll punch and roll, which is basically just, you know, if you make a mistake, you just go back to the spot where you made a mistake and then start over um, mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. that spot. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I do. And also, I guess I should mention um, 
the you do have uh, most times an editor um, who will you know edit everything um, for you after. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I guess I just do it line by line and switch characters, which sometimes gets tricky. Like right now, I'm doing a book that's like has six different uh, kids in it, and they're wow. it's literally the whole book is just dialogue, a bunch of dialogue, and their teacher. So that's been a little tricky for me, just like remembering every voice and being like mm-hmm. okay it's this person now this person now this person um but with that I have like this uh extra or not extra but this other document that I have open side by side with uh, an example of each voice so sometimes if I get stuck I'm like oh let me go back and listen to his voice or let me go back and listen to this voice so yeah yeah you just literally just answered my next question I was like okay how do you keep the voices straight do you have like a little a little like um um, MP3 of each voice to be like remind. Okay, wait, which voice am I am I doing right now? <laughs> yes, exactly that. Yes, I like in the DAW. I have like a separate um a separate file, and I have like the tracks all layered, and then I'll just isolate whichever parts I need to hear. Hmm. Yes, that I love that. That's so interesting, Tyler, and such a skill, girl. That's a skill. <laughs> Thanks. It's been pretty crazy, but fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you can say or not say, because I don't want anybody to get offended, but has there been, like, a favorite book you've done so far? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> my favorite book so far has definitely been, um, it's called Beyonce, and it's a okay. children's book by Nansibuga Nagadia Isdal. Um, and it is a biography of her life. Um, Mm -hmm. It's like a chapter book for kids. And Mm -hmm. it's definitely been my favorite so far just because, um, you know, I think the reason why I love doing this is just to, you know, get to impact little girls, specifically little girls of color. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to, to be able to combine that with this work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That just gave me chills when you just said that. Because I didn't even (laughs) think about it in that way of like, yeah, these young girls of color are hearing another woman of color. Yeah. Doing this, narrating the book. Like, this is her job. Yeah, that that's been it's been really emotional for me too. Like I remember when I was narrating it, um, and just reading the credits at the beginning, and like I was like narrated by Tyler Collier, and I just started weeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like that's my name. I just said my own name. <laughs> yeah, like, just so crazy. This mm-hmm. whole journey. <laughs> mhm, mhm. Yeah, and it's just the beginning of the journey for you, my friend. Which is even crazier. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Oh, yay. Oh, congrats, Tyler. This is this is my hand cut. This is me giving you your flowers. Thank you. Right now. Right now, my friend. Yes. Aww, yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so I wanted to ask you about, because you know, we kind of had a, a little pre-conversation about this, but you know, returning to the industry. So Right now, you know, we, you have taken on audiobooks. And, and from what I've just learned from you, you you're not going to let those go. Um, no way. So, <laughs> no, right. No way. So that <laughs> means, you know, figuring out how to navigate, if you will, um, live theater with audiobooks now and also prioritizing our mental health as artists Mm -hmm. Um, because that's been a big thing that I think and and here's the thing I'm gonna speak for myself actually with this I know other people I've spoken to other people about it but especially with myself it's like realizing how much I didn't take care of my mental health in terms Mm. of like auditioning and and going I have to be available for these auditions or or you know, not prioritizing taking a day off when I, I have to get these sides done and I have to get this done and I have to get that done and like trying to submit for everything you think you fit and or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, accepting audition appointments. You're like, oh, I don't really want to do that, but you accept it. Um, so I mm-hmm. want to talk about, you know, re returning to musical theater, but having a new mindset 
prioritizing yourself and your mental health and knowing that like you got audiobooks to depend on. So like musical theater, like I'll choose you if I want. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You can you can take it. <laughs> I probably will. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow that one. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You can borrow. You can borrow. You can Thank have you. it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. I feel like you pretty much said like everything that I feel about this um I definitely feel like pre-pandemic my mental health took a back seat like permanently it was always in the back seat it was never in the front <laughs> um uh-huh. and yeah I think by the end of it like I definitely was just so burnt out um mm-hmm. uh by the start of the pandemic I was extremely just burnt out um and I mean even even doing uh my dream role team moon like I was still like burnt out mentally Um, Mm -hmm. which I think is important to note that like, you know, a lot of times people will be like, oh, you're doing what you've always dreamed of. So this must be amazing. But it's kind of like, well, yeah, but if your mind's not right, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not going to be, I mean, it's going to still be great, but it's not going to be everything it could be. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, going back, I, now I'm not willing to compromise on my mental health. Like if I Mm -hmm. need to rest um I'm not gonna rest and I think I have felt so guilty for resting Mm, in the past and it's something I still struggle with feeling guilty every time that I rest um something I'm working on right now with my therapist shout out to my therapist she's amazing Um, shout out to all the therapists okay (laughs) shout out to mine's amazing too shout out to all the therapists yes truly because they are like I can't even imagine you know what they go through, um, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. dealing with everyone else's problems plus their own, um, right. during this time, especially. Um, so yeah, I mean, something that we're working on is just challenging, um, my negative thoughts and, and counteracting that. And I think it's, it is a negative thought every time that I think about, okay, I'm going to rest. Like then the thoughts come like, oh, but you should be doing something. What do you mean you're mm-hmm. going to rest? You have to do this. You have to do that. Why are you going to rest, Tyler? That's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. I'm working on just saying resting is not a waste of time. Right. If I don't rest, I will burn out. And if I burn out, then anything that I do is not going to be my best anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Just, I'm just trying to tell myself that um, every day. Cause it's definitely a, a struggle. But now that I am, have started practicing it, I know that I'm not going to compromise on it and I'm not going to give up or let up on, um, you know, retraining my brain to see rest as, um, uh, a good use of my time instead of a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And what do you think that would look like for you? Um, to kind of like I'm prioritizing my mental health and like not compromising so like y'all can wait (laughs) (laughs) um you know I feel like it's you know something something you said earlier was um how you know we'd accept auditions even if we didn't really want to do it it's like something Mm -hmm. for me would just be like you know what I actually don't want to do this so let me not invest time Mm -hmm. into like making a tape or going to the audition or whatever let me just like actually just rest and use this time to rest so that when I when an audition comes that I am excited about I can be ready to do that and have energy Mm mm-hmm yes yes yeah that's it (laughs) <laughs> that's simple that's it yeah it's like why again that goes back to what you said about feeling guilty about saying no to a you know an opportunity or or an audition that could potentially give you an opportunity you're like no thank you I'll mm-hmm. take the next one the next one yep. that I that like you said excites you or you're interested in I'll yes. be ready for that one because I'll be well rested yes yeah I think that's another thing too to just I think a lot of times like as actors we can sometimes operate from this like scarcity mentality of like oh my Mm -hmm. gosh but if I don't go to this then you Mm -hmm. know then what will I have and it's like you're gonna have exactly what you need to have Tyler just (laughs) wait (laughs) (laughs) yes 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 but you know I think that we needed this time Mm -hmm. I think that's also 
um, a positive that has come out of this time is like, slow down yeah. and you will have exactly what you need. And I think we all, after the initial shock of what was happening with this um, pandemic, mm-hmm. we then were like, oh, thank God. This was actually the vacation I didn't know I needed. Yeah. And then once we took that time to rest, they're like, oh, okay, now what can I do? Mm-hmm. But we didn't, Tyler, we didn't know it. We didn't know we needed a break. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know. Now I, knew, I literally, I think about like the days that we would do, like, you know, packing it. First of all, packing a huge bag, sometimes a suitcase to go down. The size of a toddler. <laughs> mm-hmm, literally the size of a toddler to go down to um, to Midtown to audition and then to mm-hmm. work, you know, um, for me, it was babysitting to work your, um, your side job, mm-hmm. auditioning. And then, you know, sometimes you'd have a rehearsal or whatever, and you just bring your entire life in a bag all day. Mm -hmm. And then you come Mm -hmm. home and you're just too exhausted to even enjoy the home that you're paying for. And you just (laughs) go to sleep. (laughs) Uh, Yep. Yeah, it sounds about right. (laughs) I can't do that anymore. I cannot. I will never. I can't do that Mm -hmm. ever again. Oh, Mm -mm. my goodness. No. Tyler, I can't. I will never do that again. <laughs> yeah. Who said that was a good idea? Right. Like the quality of life was just, I, now I look back and I'm like, that wasn't living. That was just like existing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. There it is. There it is. That's what it was. That what wasn't life that was existing. And mm-hmm. oh, yes. Yes. And this actually brings up, I have a little quote on my mirror. Um, that says taking care of yourself is productive. Mm. So, you know, those thoughts that you have of like, well, I I can't rest. I have to do this. I have to do that. But yeah, resting because it's taking care of yourself is productive. Mm. I love that. Like it's productive because how how are you going to record an audio book if you're tired? And if you are running around worried about something, those six characters are going to blend into one. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's going to come out in the voice because, you know, like you're talking, you can hear if you're tired. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You can. The microphone is is not <laughs> it's not forgiving at all. <laughs> like it's not forgiving. They're like, uh, yeah, we can. <laughs> Tyler, are you good? Like because that was a little rough, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want that. So Right. We don't we don't want that. We don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, so I guess I'd be I'd have uh one last question for you. And that would be if you have any, what advice would you give to other artists as we now, you know, navigate this new normal? Because to be very honest, we don't know what the world is actually going to look like, especially coming the entertainment industry and theater and, you know, <clears throat> how we're going to work together and all, you know, all of the things that we, we have to still figure out. So with mm-hmm. that, do you have any words of advice for artists who are just, you know, okay, let's, let's navigate this new normal. Um, let's see. I would say like, number one, get your mind right. Mm-hmm. That's my best piece of advice and even Mm -hmm. to myself get your mind right because I really believe that having a healthy mindset is the genesis of being able to achieve everything that you Mm -hmm. desire Mm -hmm. and without Mm it it's just not going to be as fruitful yeah yeah oh yay Tyla thank you for that little nugget of advice (laughs) get your mind right yes And in any way that you, you know, is is right for you. Yes. You know. Yes. There are a lot of different ways to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, Tyler, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. I've learned so much. Like, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yes. Yes. You're welcome. And before I let you go, I must say something to you. And that is, I acknowledge you. I celebrate you and I uplift you. Mm. That's all. That's that really just touched my heart. Thank you. You're so very welcome. You're so very welcome. Tyla, 
Thank you for sharing. I learned so much about audiobooks. Thank you for giving us a glimpse into your world now. I do agree with you that getting your mind right is the base of everything and allows you to achieve and move forward. Also, actively choosing not to compromise when it comes to your mental health is very important. Tyla, thank you again for sharing. And thank you for tuning in to the season finale episode of season two. Yep, season two is now complete, y'all. I can't believe it. Thank you to my editor, Kieran, for joining the Artist Pivot podcast team this season. You, my friend, are a rock star. I am taking a little summer break from the podcast, but will return this fall. I want to say thank you to all my listeners and subscribers and for those who told me about connections made because of the podcast. Everyone, please enjoy your summer. Stay safe. And remember, I acknowledge you, I celebrate you, and I uplift you. <laughs>